In this example, we're going to compute the work done by this vector field here, x squared minus xy, in moving a particle along the quarter circle counterclockwise around the origin, like so. All right, so as usual, our first step is to write down a parameterization. So we will take uh, the usual c of t to be cosine t sine t. And so we'll need t to go from 0 to pi over 2 in order to make it a quarter of the way around the circle. And just because I need it, I'm going to next write down the derivative here. Um, and now I can use that to substitute my parameterization into the integral. And so I'm going to be using x equals x of t and y equals y of t. Those are the two substitutions I need to make into my vector field. So the work starts off as looking like the integral over c of f dot d little c. And then in terms of the parameter domain, let's see, so we've got uh, this right here telling me that we're going from 0 to pi over 2. And then we've got f. So let's see, so I'm going to be substituting x in here and here and y in here. So I'm going to get a cosine squared t in the first coordinate, and then I'm going to have a minus cosine t sine t in the second coordinate. So that is my f of c of t, parameterized now. And then I'm going to have my dc. So that's going to be a c prime of t dt. Okay. So then the next thing to do is uh, work out the inner product. And so let's see, so multiplying this out, I get uh, minus two cosine squared t sine t dt. And at this point, we have uh, a single variable integral. We're back in the land of calc two. And it's not hard to see how to integrate this one here. If I put u equal to cosine t, then I've got a du right here. And so after doing that, I get, uh, let's see, 2 thirds cosine cubed t evaluated from 0 to pi over 2, which gives me 2 thirds um, 0 minus 1. So I have minus 2 thirds. There's our answer. OK, so that minus sign, that minus sign corresponds to the fact that we are moving through the vector field counter um, to the direction in which the vector field is pointing. So in other words, we passed along this curve going counterclockwise, like so. And you see that the, uh, the vector field is fighting against us every step of the way. So in other words, if I look at the projections of these vectors onto uh, the tangent, whoops, let me uh, switch colors here. Um, compared to the tangent vector, it's pointing the opposite way. The projection is going to be uh, going the other direction. So this just serves to underscore the point that for vector integrals, whoops, Direction matters. Unlike we saw for scalar uh, line integrals earlier. And by the way, the parameterization, um, as long as I'm going on the same curve, the parameterization doesn't matter. So let's just zip back up and, and look at this right here. Now, if I were to do something uh, ridiculous, like say I chose C of T to be um, cosine of 
t squared sine of t squared. And then I guess I'd, I'd need to alter the interval a little bit too. All right, now that would make my life harder. It would be difficult, so I'm not gonna do that. But if I did, all that would change is the speed that I move along the path. So it's still the same path. It's just the speed that I'm moving along it. Um, that wouldn't actually change anything. I would still end up getting um, minus two thirds. Now, if I go along a different path, I'll have a different answer. If I go along the reversed path, so starting at the top and then coming down, then that would actually uh, give me an integral of two thirds, right? Positive two thirds, because I'm going around in the opposite direction. But the speed that I go down the path doesn't actually matter.